Kay Don was a pioneer for women's athletics at A&M and the school's first head women's basketball coach. In 1972, she helped start the Women's Sports Association, which funded nine new Aggie teams. From 75 to 84, Don served as assistant AD for women's athletics. Don was 56 and 37 in three seasons at the helm of women's basketball and also served as the head coach for softball and bowling. Today, women's athletics at A&M is a national powerhouse built upon the foundation laid by this Aggie pioneer. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Hall of Honor inductee, Kay Don. Howdy. Howdy. Thank you for that great introduction. I really appreciate it. And looking at that picture up above, I don't think I've changed much in 50 years. <laughs> I am honored to be here this evening as a Hall of Honor recipient. I'm in the company of so many extraordinary individuals. For 50 years, I have been proud of my Aggie roots and delighted by the success of so many athletes and coaches. I am truly humbled by being a part of the rich Texas A&M traditions. I want to start by thanking those who have made this evening possible for me. First, the Texas A&M Letterman's Association for bestowing this prestigious honor on me. I especially want to thank board members Erica Erickson and Margaret Spence McGrath for their assistance guiding me through the process. I also want to thank the individuals who played a large role in nominating me, Shirley Furlong, and Shan McDonald, former student athletes, started whispering in the ears of those who could make my nomination possible. Jen Nixon, former women's athletic trainer, took the torch and did the heavy lifting. Jen spent hours researching, contacting organizations, former athletes, and many others who provided information to assist her in creating a file worthy of consideration. I also want to thank all of the student athletes who wrote letters of support. It took a village, and I am truly grateful for their endorsements. I would also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge my professional colleagues with whom I worked from the early 70s until 1984. Carl Landis, who was chairman of the physical education department, who gave me the latitude to start women's sports while I was an instructor in the physical education department. Mickey Little, who was also an instructor in the physical education department, shared coaching responsibilities with me in 1972 and also was instrumental in assisting me as we formed the Women's Sports Association, which engaged in competition in the newly formed AIAW, which was the Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women at the national level. In 1975, Marvin Tate, athletic director, and Wally Groff, business manager, entered the picture as my colleagues when women's sports were integrated into the Texas A&M athletic department. I thank them for accepting and promoting women's athletics. Laying the foundation for the women's athletic program was exciting and challenging. It took dedicated coaches who worked without pay and committed student athletes who accepted playing with just the bare bones. 
They were just grateful to compete. We started with a $300 donation from the campus bookstore. And that was it. Everything else was paid for by the student athletes, the coaches, the administrators. I'm thrilled so many student athletes from my tenure are here tonight. I would love all coaches, student athletes, athletic trainers, and all other support personnel involved with women's sports at A&M between 1972 and 1984 to please stand to be recognized. Thank all of you very much. You were the pioneers who blazed the early trails during my years here at A&M. The student athletes made those years for me exciting and rewarding. Your successes during those early years laid the foundation for today's national recognition for Texas A&M as a superpower in women's sports in this country. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't take a trip down memory lane and recall some of the most remarkable moments of my Texas A&M tenure. First, the opportunity to work exclusively in college athletics which led to my very rewarding career. Secondly, having the women athletes integrated into the athletic department by presenting a proposal to, and receiving approval by then President Jack Williams. Adding basketball to the program in the second year, 1973-74, and being the head coach as well as the athletic administrator. And I will always remember the Aggies' victory in the last AIW-sponsored national softball championship in 1982, coached by Bob Brock. I will never forget standing on Kyle Field for the first time when we were recognized for that title. Then, the very next year, 1983, in our inaugural year in the NCAA, we again won the National Softball Championship under Coach Bob Brock. That was incredible. We were just so excited. And who can forget the outstanding Aggie traditions? the Corps of Cadets, the Yale Leaders, Reveille, the First Lady of Aggieland, and, of course, the Twelfth Man. These long-standing traditions are the heart and soul of Aggieland, embraced by students, coaches, faculty, alumni, and all of us who have had the privilege to have been part of the Texas A&M athletics. I have come full circle on the 50th year of women's athletics, as tomorrow will be my last appearance on Kyle Field. Tonight is the culmination of my professional career. I have been inducted into my high school Hall of Fame the first Hall of Fame in Dayton, Texas, my undergraduate Hall of Fame at Southwest Texas State, now known as Texas State, and now Texas A&M Hall of Honor. I am grateful for a long and fulfilling career. I thank you for this honor and for making tonight my proudest moment, gig'em.